today we're going to be talking about audio in QLab 3. Uh, audio in QLab 3 is absolutely amazing. They've added special effects in there, so you can do all kinds of interesting effects on your vo vocals in real time. Uh, you have over 48 channels of audio with the Pro License. Um, you can do amazing crossfades. And we'll be covering all of these in part one and part two of our video podcast. So we have an open workspace in QLab. Um, we have set the preferences um, to include built-in audio output so we can hear what we're doing in QLab. So if you look under here under audio, you'll see that audio patch one is set to built-in output. And you want to want to set this to whatever device you're listening to. In this case, it's going to go out of the built-in Macintosh speakers. Um, I have mine plugged into a mini jack out into my stereo, so I'll be able to hear that through my speakers on my desk as well. Um, as far as the matrix mixer goes, um, you want to put a zero here and a zero here um, in channels one and two, both set um, at the defaults of zero um, with input one and two to have that um, kind of going out. That would be already set by default, so you shouldn't have to worry about that at all. So audio in, in QLab, um, you can import uh, AIF, WAV files, CAF, AAC, MP4, and MP3. Um, all those formats are supported. I prefer to use AIF because it does reduce the amount of um, work that your processor has to, to use to un uncode those. AIF files are bigger files, um, but it does reduce the uh, processor request processor stress, I guess, um, having to decode those. Um, you do want to have a fast hard drive for all these, uh, for using QLab. Um, I prefer an SSD drive, which has no moving parts, um, and since I upgraded to that, it has been shockingly, shockingly fast. Um, uh, you create a QLab uh, audio queue uh, a couple different ways. You can either just click here, and it'll have one pop up, um, you can click and drag one down to make it show up as well. You can also find an audio file that's um, one of those formats on your desktop. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to grab some of the uh, default Apple Loops uh, iLife sounds. <clears throat> so, and you can just drag that in right into QLab. So either way, same thing works. Um, if I wanted to assign something to these that are not, they have X's because no audio cue is assigned to, assigned to them. You can either click on the cue itself and then from here, double click or drag a file here. So in this case, I'll just drag one in. I'm going to drag a, this guy here in and he will show up. You can see the path to that file right here as well. And if you ever want to get to that file and see where it is, you have a couple options. Click that little arrow and it'll open up that window of where that file lives to show you where it is. And in this case, on this guy here, we'll click on the file, and we'll double click here, and it'll open up a little uh, navigation box, and then we'll just, you know, use that to find where, um, you know, where those uh, audio files we want to use are. In this case, I'm going to go back to the desktop. In my QTech files folder, I do have a shortcut to um, Apple's audio loops and uh, let's just pick a different one, we'll pick something from soundtrack lots lots of sound files and uh, we'll just pick a fairly short one, probably something small uh, door opening and closing and you click on it once, you can either double click on it which will automatically open it or just click on it once and hit open so now all three of these files are assigned into, uh, into QLab. Um, you can see which one's selected. The playhead goes to the one that's clicked on right here. And that would be the one that will fire when you hit the go button. So for example, if I hit this one and hit go, we'll start playing it. So you can stop the queue, whatever you want, by uh, pushing the stop button here. Your other options for stopping that same cue are um, hitting the X button right here. We'll do the same thing. That'll also stop it. Um, that does a nice little fade out as well. Um, same thing if you're hitting, if you're playing it again. 
Um, let me bring it back up here. Hit the go button. Um, if you hit the escape key, it's the same thing really as hitting this X button, only because there's one queue running. The escape key will do that slow fade out as well, which is much nicer and less abrupt than the uh, stop button, which is a little bit harsh. You can also do pause, rewind, and uh, you know play from that same section, as long as the playhead here is in position right there to let you... Uh, I'm sorry, that'll only apply if the cue is already going, and you pause it and you want to continue playing again from that position. The nice thing about audio here is you can play multiple files at once. So say we have, uh, we have this, this file going here, and I hit go, and I will now trigger the open door sound, which is pretty hard to hear because it is pretty small, and it just played for a moment. The playhead is on this next one, so I'll start that. And so you have two audio files running right on top of each other, um, which isn't that interesting, except in a play, for example, where you want to have sound effects of some kind. So you might have a slight background music of some rain or something like that. And you want to have the phone ring, for example. Um, the easy to do. That'd be easy to do. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm, let's go ahead and set that up and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So let's say we look for some rain sounds. Um, I think if we go back here. And look for some ambience. And maybe a little luck, we'll have some rain. There we go, rain and thunder, perfect. So we'll gra drag some rain in here. We'll drop, get rid of these other cues. To do that, I'm just gonna click the first cue I wanna get rid of, hold down the shift key, and get rid of the other one, and you hit command, delete, we'll dump those. So now we have our rain cue. We're gonna turn that on to loop, so it keeps going over and over again. And uh, you can see it kind of fades out and fades back in on its own. Let's have a quick listen to it. And we can jump ahead while we're doing that just by hitting this. Uh, actually, you can't do that because you need it to uh, loop. It's in the middle of playing itself, so you can't jump ahead like that at that point. So let's just hear how it loops around when it comes to the end because it might be better to have it start um, a little bit earlier so it doesn't completely fade out. But for our example, that's probably fine. We're just going to have it, it's going to loop right back around to the other side. And you hear it kind of fade out and come back in again. So the easiest way to just quickly fix that, it's all non-destructive editing, which is one of the wonderful things about QLab. You know? So no matter what you do to this, I'm not really going to hurt or change the original file. So I'll just pull in this thing here a little bit, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to take him in just a hair, and uh, we can preview that by clicking just to the right here and hit play. And that actually works perfectly. Pretty clean, pretty easy, and it'll keep looping. So then let's find a phone ringing. I think if we go to uh, Foley, it should have uh, something like that. Let's see, Foley. And I think ringing phones or phone here. <clears throat> Well, let's just do a uh, squeak toy, because that's, that's pretty common in a play. You're going to need to have squeak toy here and there. So we have our squeak toy sound. Let's preview that. It's a little quiet, so we're going to go ahead and turn that up a little bit. Go to device and levels. Uh, you can either turn this up or both of these up. Either way, I'm just going to turn up the main a little bit and have a quick listen again. Pretty good. We'll take it up all the way just for fun. Okay, so if we play this, and this is going to start looping, and now I hit the go button again, the next cue that's on deck is squeeze toy. This will continue to play, continue to loop, and we get our, our squeak toy sound. But you don't really want to be locked into this, this loop where everything's in sequence, right? So let's, let's just stop this. Let's put sound, this cue here, and assign a trigger for it. So we're going to have a hotkey trigger and we'll have it be S since it's squeak toy and you just hit S there. It'll always be a cap in here, it doesn't really matter. Now it says that this hotkey is already being used by the workspace 
Um, and that's because it's used for other events. So it's not going to let me use that. So I'm going to go up and uh, just take that one out of the preferences file. So if we go to key map and we find our S, which is right here, and I'm just going to get rid of that right there. And that will uh, eliminate that from being an issue with trying to run this baby. So now I'll put our S in here. And now um, you'd have this sitting here playing. And whenever you want your S to happen, you hit the S key. So we have our two cues here. Uh, let's say uh, that the rain is running here. And at some point, we may want to fade this out or change of scene or whatever. Now, you know, just stopping the cue will cut it off abruptly, either from here or you could add a stop cue. In this case, you want to add just a simple fade cue. So let's just stop the music just manually while we work on it here. We're going to put in, uh, put the playhead here, and we're going to add a fade cue just by clicking on it, which will drop it into place here. And then you drag and you drop on this, uh, this cue to itself, saying that this is the target, this fade is going to target this audio cue here. And uh, if we look at this, it still has an X on it, and if you roll over that, it'll tell you why it's giving you that error. No fade parameters have been enabled. Pick at least one thing to fade. And so in this case, we're working on an audio file. So we'll go down here to levels, and all the levels are sort of down, but it has to kind of be activated. So we're just going to move it up a little bit and down, and you'll notice that that goes away, saying that we want this to be zero. We also can check stop target when done, which will kill this and stop it from looping anymore. You could also leave it running and then fade it back up again uh, next time you need it, which is kind of a nice option to have. So we'll check that. And this time when we play it, we're going to go play, starts playing. It's on deck next. Again, anytime we want to make the squeaky sound, hit, hit the S key, it'll kick that in. Um, that can even happen uh, right during a go command. So we're going to hit squeaky key and hit go, and it's going to fade out the rain. And the rain fades out, and yet we still have access to any of the sound effects or any things like that that we, that we might want. Another thing to consider doing is to move things that are, that are being triggered, you know, sound effects instead of like background music and stuff, into its own cue list. And that way you kind of have them off to the side and they won't be in kind of your timeline area uh, of what you're doing. So we're going to do that. We're just going to hit add new list and you click the plus button here. And then you double click on it and you can rename it. Let's just name it sound effects. And we go back to our main queue here. And let's just drag uh, squeeze toy AF into, the, um, into this guy here. So he's in that little, uh, that little group right there. You can drop him in and out. So you, now you have your main cue list here. And you can play, do your rain and everything. And Squeak Toy, even though it's not in this, cue, in this main um, list, right? it's on its own cue list off the side of sound effects, it is still available. So hitting that S key will still trigger that whenever you, you might need it. And uh, again, hitting go because the target is here. Our playhead is here. It'll fade that out and uh, you're good to go. So you can have hundreds of audio cues all ready to go, all in one loop, and it's super easy to use, sounds fantastic, and uh, thousands and thousands of options. All right, we'll continue the rest of this in part two.